<laughs> my back and walked out. Now Here's you're back. Door. Yeah. You are back. Okay. So this is our first live stream. Uh, we're playing around with some technology tonight. And uh, the topic for us is uh, it's a little dated, but the Hummer EV came out last week. Mm -hmm. It's big news. It is big news. Really shaking things up. I think it's been really, really hotly anticipated since what the Super Bowl around that time is when they first announced they were going to do this, or Man, we saw the right. kind of teaser pics. You're right, and I completely forgot they teased the, uh, yeah. the truck during the Super Bowl. We've been sitting around for wow, um, nine months now, waiting. We we're in a time warp, man. It's 2020. It's the, it's the pandemic world. Nothing makes sense. Time has no meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Time has stood still for us, but uh, now it's here. So during the World Series, ironically enough, they decided to roll out the Hummer EV and uh, tell the world what it was going to be about and then proceed to tell us we have to wait uh, like two years to get one, oh, if you can yeah. even get one. In true GM form. Yes. The, I, this, I can't this is tell you how GM that is. Uh, <laughs> that is. Oh, man. It, it harkens back to the, uh, the Camaro when they, you know, they brought the Camaro back and they told you about it for about six years. Yeah. And then they showed yeah. it to you and they said, it's going to be another four years. Yeah. And then, you know, we finally got it. But uh, I mean, what's your initial impressions uh, of what you saw oh, when they rolled out this truck? My initial impression is that it looks kind of okay. It, it's got a bit of a gussied up H2 look. It's not that kind of uh, so ugly, it's a beautiful H1 look to it, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think they 100% nailed it on that, but exterior aesthetics aside i'm really pumped about it because the tech that they you know teased in their launch video and everything is incredible looking yeah the tech is yeah. overwhelming i like the way it looks i don't love it but i like right. it because yeah. it's in your face yeah it's aggressive it's bold um it's clearly intended to be this gnarly off-road uh -huh. go anywhere adventure vehicle uh -huh. right just the like lights. you've got in your background right now yeah. now in in this shot i love it because i love oh wait the the shot of that crazy roof yes um, so so this to me is where it's really in its element and where it's really going to attract you know a lot of excitement yeah absolutely i the the removable roof the fact that you can stow all of those panels in the mm -hmm. front is that is pretty cool because mm -hmm. sitting in my driveway right now is a Jeep Gladiator and the roof comes off and it's kind of a pain to store that stuff. Yep. So if I'm out somewhere and I've got people with me in the back seats, then I'm pulling mm -hmm. roof panels off and I'm just putting them in the bed of the truck. And yep. That's not really a great solution. So this solves it. Uh, something unique to electric vehicles, right? So we don't have an engine yep. up front. We've got more storage. We can do crazy things. Uh -huh. Kind of like the one that's over your shoulder. Yes. Uh -huh. Which is another EV truck that's coming. We'll talk a little uh -huh. bit about yeah. the Rivian later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you but, might be able to actually get one of those soon. Yes. Yeah. Because what? The Hummer EV came out and how much does this thing cost? Oh boy, it's I mean it's it's easily gonna push six figures, right? Right. No, so the first edition, which is the only one that was out for sale or or reservation, was a hundred and twelve thousand dollars, fully mm -hmm. loaded. Everything. Yeah. And supposedly GM sold out of those in about five minutes. Not surprised. Yeah. I mean you can put a hundred dollars down. It's the whole it's kind of the trick Tesla put out there with the yeah. cyber truck. They went from a thousand dollar reservation all the way down to the hundred dollars. And now all of a sudden everybody, you know, pulls out their credit card and says, hundred bucks. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. I'll just hold on to one. Something yeah. the Fort Bronco did too, just a couple of months ago uh, with great success. Something like 400,000 reservations. I think I read. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, Cybertruck, or I'm sorry, the Hummer EV, much more exclusive. Uh, we actually don't even know what the, the first edition production numbers are going to look like. Uh, but it's going to be small and they're already sold out, which means you can't even get one probably for another three years uh, if you haven't already reserved one. And so you mentioned something about the technology. What uh, what jumped out at you from a tech standpoint that kind of blew your mind? Uh, the crab walk thing. I thought yeah. it was pretty cool. I mean, there's lots going on there with the, uh, the all-wheel drive you know, tech and everything. But uh, to me, the really cool thing was I was just like, oh, the crab walk, that's just made for a press release video, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. How often are you really going to use it? But uh, you can say you have it. So uh you know for your hundred thousand dollars here's the deal with crab walk uh if you're doing hardcore off-roading you're going to use it yeah there's just going to be times where it it changes the game if you're on an incline uh and you've got something right in front of you and you know big rock or whatever that's that's tough to get over if you could just slide a little bit right uh -huh. uh, without the whole back up and go for it and all that and try to get the right angle. If you can just slide a little bit over, it'll yeah. work. No, 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 I hear you. I just think the uh, stickiest situation that these things are going to see for a long, long time is going to be when somebody spills their latte on Rodeo Avenue or Drive. Like, it's just, that's, that's where all these launch vehicles are destined to end up, uh, is, in a, is a paved paradise. So... All right, man. It's our uh, uh, it's our first video, and uh, you're already taking a shot at uh, the truck drivers. That's rough, hey. man. So no. your your premise is one hundred twelve thousand dollars. These are mall these are mall crawlers. Nobody's going to take this thing off road. Uh, not malls. People don't people don't go to malls anymore. <laughs> so you're saying even when the mall? Their, you're even taking a shot at the lingo. Shopping. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody goes to the mall anymore. To okay. Not to do high end shopping, no. Ooh, I'm not so oh, sure about gosh. that. I think you might be wrong. Uh, I, I am told. I'm getting breaking news that there's supposed to be comments rolling in. I am uh, hearing the same thing. Oh, uh, okay. I'm seeing. I'm seeing something along those lines uh, that we actually have some comments on our live stream. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, we've got somebody, a, a guy named Brendan Mallowy. Brendan uh, Malley. Ma Malley. 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 Uh, yeah. See, he says he can get up to four Broncos for the same price as the Hummer EV truck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or a hundred nineteen ninety nine Toyota Corollas. So, I mean, I don't understand. Uh, yeah. What's what the, the point? point? Yeah. Yeah. You know. But okay, great point. How many? Well, how many ratted out Miatas can you get? <laughs> for uh, the same price as a Hummer EV. Maybe he could answer that one for us. I bet he could answer so many things for us. You know, maybe you never know when Brendan uh, might just dial in and join us and offer up his opinions live instead of via chat. But we'll see. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, oh, Brendan does bring up a great point, though. Escape mode. All right. Describe escape mode. No, you do it because I don't remember what it was. Uh, no, so man, it's mode. when you get stuck and it, and it escapes. Oh, it can lift itself like 100 nice. inches in the air. <laughs> at uh, least at least 100 inches. It's the go-go gadget Hummer. It can like boom, and drive off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it. Uh, there is a special off-road mode where the truck will increase uh, the lift via the air suspension. Yeah. And kind of the killer part of that, though, is, I got a couple of all roads in my driveway that it, that'll do that. I mean, that's like 20 years old. You're killing it, man. I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's also a lie because neither one of them will do that because their suspension is broken and was replaced because it's crap. Anyway, please so continue. What's great about EVs um, in an off-road setting is um, is how the car can actually control the torque output to the mm -hmm. tires, to the wheels. And so escape mode is optimized um, to get you out of those situations. Uh, now, the, the crazy thing about escape mode is, is that it does lift the vehicle to its max setting, mm -hmm. right? And then there's no travel at all in that suspension, okay? 
And so it only does it at very, very low speeds. In fact, as soon as you're out, basically wants you to get back out of escape mode and get back into its normal suspension travel setting. So yeah, and then it optimizes everything uh, just to get you out of whatever situation you're in. Uh, looks pretty cool, looks pretty nifty. Um, you know, I, I think from a technology standpoint, uh, one of the, the other things that kind of jumps out at you is, okay, this is a great off-road truck. It's also a truck that will do zero to 60 in three seconds. Yeah. A big, massive, heavy pickup truck yeah. on 35 inch tires. will do zero to 60 in three seconds. And so uh, weren't they claiming like a thousand foot pounds of torque? pound feet of torque uh no cool. they were claiming a thousand horsepower and eleven thousand ah, foot pounds of torque that's right i'm sorry which, gosh you know it, it's a it is a gimmick uh yeah. you know go watch the engineering explain channel uh he'll walk you through all the details of how they got to that number and why it's it's kind of ridiculous but tesla plays the same game so gm yeah. was like hey we can do that sure we can, we can do math you know? so well, yeah it's it, uh. Guys talking up EVs always want to uh, play up the torque aspect of the vehicle, and it is incredibly impressive, and you get this amazing performance. And honestly, uh, I'm kind of, that's the one thing about the EV revolution I'm, that kind of scares me to death is all these cars hitting the market with obscene performance and uh, people not really being able to handle that. Mm. And it is obscene. You're t I mean, you know, I've the, I think the fastest car... <laughs> I've actually driven to zero to 60 in what, just under five. Uh, I drove a C5 Corvette that was probably another I think second that quicker than that. SVR we had was in the low That's fours. That's right, in the low fours. In the yeah. low fours, it's pretty fast. It's uh, pretty stinking fast. Yeah. Oh, well, we did the the, the uh, E-Pace, e which was even faster, right? Yeah. Wasn't that a true about three seconds? No, it's not. I don't think it was quite that fast because I will tell you, I've been in a – a Model Y performance, mm -hmm. uh, and that is the fastest vehicle I've ever been in, and that's right at like 2.9, 3.0, okay. 0 to 60, and it will make you sick to your stomach if you're not ready. Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. abs it alters your uh, – you, your brain can't really process no. that kind of torque and that, you know, that quick. It's crazy. If you're not used to it, yeah, it's like it squeezes a little bit of the air out of your lungs. Uh-oh, hey, you know. hey, breaking, oh. breaking. Oh, I think we've got uh, we've got incoming. We oh, have yeah. incoming Brendan oh, Malloy. Oh, maybe oh, joining. Going to be on the call. Yes. <laughs> oh, Welcome, no. Brendan. It says uh, says you're incoming here. We can see you, and now we're waiting on your audio. So any second now, we should have uh, the Boracle joining us. <laughs> the, the Boracle. The Boracle is on his way. Uh, the man with all the answers. Zero questions. More answers than you could possibly want. Yes. So, all right, Brendan, I think we can hear you now. Are you, Brendan, are you there? Oh, oh no. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now. All right. It was a rough start. I'm not going to lie. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just looking at the bottles behind you, Brendan, and now I'm really regretting that I'm sitting here alone without a glass of America's finest whiskey sitting next to me. Oh, some Basil Hayden. You should. You should. Very nice. I, have, actually, I have another bottle of Basil Hayden's up there that you recommended of, of their rye that I haven't the tried rye. yet. Fantastic. All right, Brittany. So, the, so, yeah, we can talk whiskey later, gentlemen. In fact, maybe in episode two, we all start out correctly <laughs> with a glass of our favorite scotch or bourbon. Uh, but Brandon, That's the topic plan. of the day, um, I think you already know what it is, is the Hummer EV. I do. And uh, so, surely, I'm very interested in your initial impressions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some takes here, guys. Uh, hot takes are kind of my thing. Uh, the best feature on the on the whole truck is the frunk. <laughs> Did you see the size of that frunk? You could fit a giant three frunk, man. bodies in there it, it's it's pretty impressive this um, is definitely a vehicle for serial killers <laughs> it's optimized you know, uh, think about it 
you can fit a ton of bodies in the front. <laughs> okay. You don't even need a tarp. It's well, you might silent. want to put a tarp down in the front, but you definitely don't need to, you know, put anything in the back. Yeah. And you can get anywhere. So, you know, if you need to dispose of bodies, yeah. it's the it's the perfect vehicle for serial killers. <laughs> and you can get there fast. Really, really, really quickly. So I, you know, probably Sorry, guys, I had to rectify this. Watts to freedom. Watts to freedom, the <laughs> WTF mode. Some man that needs a raise. That's who came up with it. Yeah, absolutely. That is the I, most America. I, won't lie. I never it never occurred to me that it was WTF. <laughs> well, it didn't for me either for a while. And I kept saying, <laughs> why, why did they call it that? I don't get it. It sounds really cheesy. And then when I saw it on paper. Like, oh, that is that is the Coors Light pop the top uh, feature right there. That is cut off jean shorts, so, sitting mean, down having a beer. What's a what's a better mode name? It, you know, Watts to Freedom or Ford's Go Over All Terrain, I think is what it is. Or any terrain, the goat mode. Goat on mode. On the new Bronco. Goat mode or just, you know. <laughs> Tesla is just ludicrous mode. Ludicrous mode. I thought of that, but uh... oh yes. All right, so yeah. that's a great pivot here because as soon as this truck came out, everybody kind of lost their minds, and they either love it or they hate it. But the immediate comparison is to the upcoming Tesla Cybertruck that everybody's trying to make, and uh, I'm curious what you guys think about that, Casey. Do you, you know? What's your initial reaction to that based on what you know about both? Oh man, I think, I think it's the classic mistake of automotive journalists comparing cars that are never really going to compete against each other. You know I what agree. I mean? Yeah. I, they're, I, I mean, you just, just look at the cyber truck, the truck, the cyber truck. I mean, I, God love it. It looks insane. Okay. It, it looks like a spaceship. It is, it is not designed for the earth. It is Elon is getting ready for when he can build a factory on Mars and outfit it all with cyber trucks. Like there's actually going to be very little crossover between those, those customers. Um, it's, you know, while probably going to end up being very capable, it's, definitely far more of a lifestyle truck um, for cruising around and saying you've got the Tesla truck. Now, I know it's kind of insane to say when we're talking about comparing it to a Hummer that's going to cost $100,000. Um, but I mean, you look at the press thing. GM has, this is, the off-road capability is a major selling point. Um, whether or not people actually do what it's fully capable of doing they're buying it because they want to feel like they can take it anywhere yeah i think while, I, while they're driving down rodeo drive so this, this is kind of how ridiculous the comparison is right is mm -hmm. it is that because it's evs we've all forgotten what market segments really are right even within a product type so this is like comparing an f-150 lightning to a ford raptor you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's totally two different types of approaches to a truck. And so everybody's like, oh, well, you're getting so much more of this in, in, this, ver in this truck versus this truck. They're different. They're just radically different from the ground up. They're going to be designed for two different functions. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think Tesla has done an amazing job opening up the EV market. And they do things that are kind of out there and yeah. absurd. And they're designed to get as much attention as they can. And the truck is no different. It looks like you said, I, I swear that Musk built himself a truck that he can Thelma and Louise off a cliff on Mars. That's his whole goal. <laughs> he's going to load this up on one of those spaceships and he's going to Mars. And he's going to drive this thing. Uh, you know, it's going to get it airborne. Uh, and it, it just that's how he's going out. So, so I've got yeah. a question. All like, right. I keep seeing this background. Uh, the Oracle has a question. And, and it reminds me that, that there's a third player in the game that I, I haven't heard mentioned yet on this, on this video. And well, I you think, should tune in sooner. I think it's got the best combination of, of options 
and, and you know, fits the true market se segment for somebody who's looking to buy a truck that also happens to be an EV. Because mm -hmm. Crazy California People is a Cybertruck. Not saying that I don't think they're insane and awesome and I kind of want one. And then the Hummer's got its advantages. But then if I look at a traditional truck, if I'm somebody who wants a truck that I can drive every day, I'm going to go to an R1T. That Rivian, it looks like a normal truck. And it's going to function as well or better than any truck that's going to be available, you know, from Ford or GM or Chevy. Yeah. And I think you're a hundred percent correct there, but that's, I mean, that's kind of Brian's point is you look at the truck behind me. I see Tacoma all day. Yes. I see people 100%. that are in that blue for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I see people that are, that are going to trade in their Tacoma for one of these and, and, and that's a different buying segment. It, yeah. it just is, you know, and, and these are, I, I can't even remember now, the R1T, well, you're probably going to pay another 20 grand over a Tacoma, something well, like that. I, I mean, know, for what Tacomas go these days, um, maybe not even that much, but at least yeah. out of the gate, the first, yeah. the first, you know, year or two, they're going to be the high end trucks. You're going to, you know, they're going to be more expensive. They're going to, yeah. you know, but, but are they going to be more expensive than a, than a King Ranch? Or, or no, you know, no, not like, necessarily. It's gonna be a seventy thousand dollar truck, which right. we've seen the market can sustain. Sure, guys. Well, the Gladiator, yeah. the Gladiator can be had for sixty three thousand dollars with a diesel engine and everything on it. Right. Yeah. So and it's kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, and people. Hurts. So people are gonna people throw mm -hmm. the kitchen sink at these things now. But you're right. It's a mid sized truck. It's an everyday yeah. truck. But it's a truck yeah. that has a tremendous amount of capability built into it, just like a, a Tacoma. So I do yeah. think that is the most direct um, uh, comparison in the, the ice market, right? It is definitely a Tacoma. Yeah. And that's why I've got it behind me, because to your point, Brendan, I mean, for me, it's the one I'm the most excited about because it's the one that's actually sort of accessible, although not really, but, you know. Like no, I, I, I would never even accessible. consider a cyber truck or a, well, you know, maybe for you, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, you know, when, when Brian decides he wants to go EV, <laughs> more EV than he already has, you know, I could see him ending up with one of those in the driveway. Yeah. I mean, it is, it yeah. is interesting, but it is you, okay. You know, all joking aside, I mean, you guys are right. It, the product is so well thought out and you can tell there that their intent, uh, they're building their entire brand on this truck they're building um everything their design ethos um you know who they want to sell to uh, what they want to build upon from here on out and so it has to be kind of mainstream but it has to set itself apart from the tesla and the you know what we see from hummer uh, but they got to be able to build a lot of them and sell a lot of them and uh you know Didn't they signed like a billion dollar deal with ford yeah, they've got all this money coming in from all kinds of players. So Ford's taking they, a big they, they chunk. Uh, Amazon, because they're going to build these delivery vehicles for Amazon. I think they, uh, they delivered the first one. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, but, you know, they're going to delivered. I think they gave them like right. a pre-production prototype. And they're, they're supposed to make like a couple hundred this year. And then they're supposed to make 20,000 or something next year. It was a big number. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're well-financed. They, uh, you know, and they've yeah. taken their time uh, and they're not rushing anything. So, you know, big, big expectations from those guys for sure. Um, so Has there have been some shots, more shots fired in our comment section. I, I don't know. You'll have to interpret that for me, Brian. Oh, man. Who is this guy? I'm glad you have a mock of how big the Hummer will be by sizing it with. Brian. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's pretty rough. Uh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. I have to take a few guesses at who that is, but I've got uh, I've got my suspicions. Yeah, I have um, no idea. Yeah, probably probably somebody who wishes they had never sold their Raptor. But, uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll find out soon enough. Oh. Okay. I'm not sending them the link to this video. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, so so i just want to ask so ford has been slowly talking about the the f the f-150 ev 
Is yeah, that, they, is they that have gonna been. Be is, is that going to be, you know, what do we have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's interesting. I, look, I mean, Ford knows how to build a pickup truck, right? They, they, they have been the market leader with the F-150 and uh, there's no way they're not going to, you know, do something in the electric truck space. Uh, they kind of, you know, the future, obviously they've said they're trying to pivot to uh, electron, electric vehicles. They're going to do an electric truck and maybe sooner rather than later. Knowing Ford though, um, considering what they've done with the Ford Mustang Mach-E, they're not really looking to the truck to be their, their brand image for electric vehicles, right? So they're probably going to go about it a little quieter. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I, uh, I'm, I'm afraid they're going to play it too safe. Like GM, yeah. GM has very little to lose with the Hummer by going to the extreme that they've gone to with the, with the Hummer. Ford has the cachet of the F-150 brand that they don't want to taint because they saw some of the, I think some of the what feedback and pushback on the Mach-E and, and uh, you know, so I'm afraid that, that they'll be so conservative on the F-150 electric that uh, it maybe couldn't, it won't be the truck it could be. Well, here's the deal. They'll be really conservative and they'll sell 50 times more of them than <laughs> Yeah. I'm not saying it's not, it's not a right way to go, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the good news is, is uh, so far uh, there's a market for every one of these things and I can't wait for them to all hit the market. Uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. I, the more choices, the better, uh, you know, a couple of things that we didn't even touch on with the Hummer EV is just the interior. And, uh, you know, they really seem to be throwing a ton of luxury at it. You know, if you look at the details and the images that came out, you know, everything is there. It's the, the high quality leather seats, the detailed stitching, the ventilated leathers, uh, the details and the materials on the doors. Um, you know, it's, it's the wood trims, the, the metal trims on top of the leather, um, you know, everything down to the floor mats. I don't know if you guys saw the edition one, but they actually went with that lunar theme to it. Uh, throwback to like the Apollo missions, uh, just some really cool features, you know, but all the luxury amenities are there too. Right. So the cooled seats, the heated seats, the heated steering wheels, the digital uh, rear view mirrors, 18 cameras, including front and rear facing trail cameras on the underbody, which uh, basically you don't need with a spotter dedicated washers with <laughs> yes, with, uh, with the washers on both the mirrors. Um, so, you know, we've seen that here recently where you get those virtual images under the, under the vehicle from the defender, the new defender 110, right? So you get this virtual image between the front wheels. Uh, GM is going to take that to the next step. They're going to do it front and rear. You can see what's underneath you. So, which is really big for the off-roaders again, if you're, uh, you know, you're worried about your breakover angle and you're worried you're about to high center something, you should actually be able to see it on your camera before it happens. Uh, so, you know, again, you know, really crazy technology. I think they, that I read, they're going to do the um, kind of 3D holo in, in maybe in holographic heads up display images. Um, what else do they throw at this thing? Super Cruise. So their next generation of Super Cruise, which we still haven't gotten to experience. Uh, their self-driving tech is going to be on this thing. Um, it's it's loaded up. There's everything on it. And you like that the roof comes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love that. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna make an off-road vehicle, that is a feature people are gonna look for. And so I think they would have been remiss not to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's got, honestly the one thing about the uh, the the Rivian, the R1T, that I'm a little bit disappointed in is there's not something there uh -huh. along those lines. Uh, there's a translucent roof you could you know you control um, kind of how like much light is in and out. The electro uh, yeah whatever electro, whatever. Come up with some something, Casey. Come on, tell us what it is. I don't know. He doesn't know. I'm just sad though, because every time I see a car without the with the roof off like that, a truck without the roof off, it's like all I want to do is get in a gasoline fight. And with these EVs, you know, you lose that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'll get you a taser for your birthday, Casey. A what? A taser. 
listen, here's the deal. There's still nothing <laughs> stopping you from going down to the, the quick show and getting in a gasoline fight. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're good. It's just less likely to happen in an impromptu fashion. Mm. That's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. I think we're kind of running out of content here, boys. But uh, good experiment. Talk about Lucid. Huh? Talk about Lucid. Lucid? What about him? I was thinking about that. What about him? I was pretty impressed. The car looks pretty good. The air? The Lucid air looks amazing. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, in the same way, like a a, a Mercedes S-Class looks amazing. Uh, Only this one is a hell of a lot faster. There you yeah. go. I think uh-huh. it is It is a gorgeous car. I really yeah. do like that. Inside and out. I mean, yeah. Oh, inside's I, a game changer. Yeah. The, the, I, don't, I, I was reading about, you know, the folks who've actually gotten to sit in one, and, and they were talking about how tremendously large the interior of the car is. Mm-hmm. And, and it feels so much bigger on the inside than on the outside, which is – I think a really interesting concept because it's going to drive like a one fast as hell EV, but two, I think, I think it's going to drive and feel like a smaller car, but still have the interior form factor of something like an S class mm-hmm. or seven series or whatever, without the issues that you have with driving a limousine sized vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I mean, that's a, that's a selling point for EVs that a lot of people don't yeah. realize until they get in them. You know, we've had a Chevy Bolt now in the family for three years. Um, it, it's about to go back uh, to General Motors. Uh, it's, it's at the end of its lease. And, you know, that's the thing people are always surprised about. It looks like a small car. And then you get in it and the space inside, it, it, you know, it's way above its class. Yeah. Because uh, you're just not constrained by the traditional design, you know, limitations of an engine and transmission tunnel and everything else. So you get a you get all the space dedicated to your passengers and um, you know, it, it that's going to carry forward in these trucks. It's going to carry forward in the lucid air. Um, and I think people are going to be surprised. And then the yeah. performance, the performance of an electric car is something that um, people just cannot appreciate until they actually drive one. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. I've wonderful. told several people that the, the Chevy Volt is, is the best car that GM makes. Um, now that's before the C8 came out. Um, which I'm sure is an awesome car. But uh, for me, like the ones I've been in, the Bolt is the best car that GM has in their lineup. Um, pound for pound. Maybe, maybe until the Hummer drives, comes out. Yeah. It drives like a GTI and it's deceptive because all that weight is down. Mm-hmm. You get in it, you feel a little higher than you would think on a car that size. Right. But the center gravity is quite low and it, it gets up and goes. It's a fun little car. I don't drive that car on a daily basis. Somebody else in the family drives it. And every time I get back in it, it, it's just a blast. And I'm always reminded like how good it actually is. And, you know, you said it's the best car. It, you know, it represented when it came out a complete uh, from kind of clean canvas, Mm -hmm. what the engineers at General Motors could do. You could tell that the leadership at General Motors went to this team they kind of threw their best guys at it and they said, do what you want to do and make it great. And don't worry about, you know, parts bins. Don't worry about traditional design. Just go do what you want to do. And, I, you know, it, it's simple. Uh, mm-hmm. It's simple to use. Uh, it just kind of hits all those, those little sweet spots, you know, in that kind of a segment, in that compact hatchback mm-hmm. style segment. Uh, really, really good vehicle. And, you know, they're a great bargain on the used market now uh, with still tremendous range. You're looking at about 250, 240, 250 miles of range on a good day, um, you know, for probably a three-year-old car. Now you can get it for probably around $15,000. Um, no gas and no maintenance. Man, you know, definitely go check those out. You could go get a, I think it was an LAPD parking enforcement BMW i3 for about fifteen grand as well. Cool. <laughs> they, bought, they bought a whole fleet of those and then barely used them and yeah. now they're selling them <laughs> god how california is that uh i was just thinking about the those the other day and 
actually just asking that question to myself, what are they like on the used market? Um, so yeah, another cool car. That's probably a good use value. That uh, to me, that's BMW started out strong in the, in the EV space with the, you know, with the I8 uh, or the, you know, range extended EV and then has just let it die. I, I haven't seen, I haven't yeah. seen any commitment and, and really from, from, you know, Audi's got the e-tron Mercedes talks about what they're doing at least a little bit more. And I know BMW has had a bunch of leadership changes. And I think those leadership changes have at least been in part because of the lack of progress on the EV front. Well, yes and no. I think what you're going to find it. So, you know, BMW treated it as an experiment, the i3, the i8, um, it, it was, you know, an engineering exercise and probably more than anything, it was how to manufacture, um, the, uh, chassis, the, the body, the, the carbon fiber tubs that they were starting to utilize for this stuff. Uh, they wanted to know how to, they wanted to get better at it. And what they've done behind the scenes is really interesting. Um, they haven't rolled out a lot of product, but they've built an infrastructure within their company and a platform um, that's uh, scalable and, and adaptable. And so what you're seeing right now, so, you know, in some ways this is really smart because nobody outside of Tesla is producing electric vehicles in a profitable manner. Okay. Nobody's doing that. Um, you know, as great as the bolt is Chevy doesn't, they don't really want to build them. They don't want to sell them. They lose money on every one of them. Um, but BMW kind of said, we got to get from point A to point B but there's going to be a little baby steps in between and we're going to build the architectures that support that. And so now almost every vehicle that you can buy from BMW actually does come in a plug-in hybrid model um, across their lineup. They don't really, you know, publish it too much, but three series, five series, X3, X5. Um, I think the X1 hybrid is already out in Europe, not quite in the United States yet, um, but they are very committed to it. And then next year you get the iX3, uh, which is your you know fully electric kind of X3, although it's on a totally different platform. So what yeah. they've done is they've invested a lot of money in figuring out how to build these components that can grow and scale depending on what they're trying to accomplish. So it's a totally different strategy than what you're seeing from everybody else. And it's quiet, but I think it's coming pretty quick. Yeah. So, so, more, so they so can more hopefully sort of actually make money at it. Yeah, they want to make money to, in yeah. the transition. Yeah. And that reminds me, you know, Volvo and, and Mercedes or and VW both have their scalable architectures. And I hadn't considered how that would play into an EV or a, a hybrid system. So that's an interesting, yeah. interesting point, Brian. Yeah. Now Volkswagen, kind of the complete opposite here. They're going there. They they've got the, what the, um, what is it? What is it that they just threw out in Europe? It's the, uh, what do they call it? Thing? The ID something. The ID three. Yeah. And then they just unveiled the ID4, which is, you know, that will be in the U.S. for sure. Yeah, they're going on in. I want one of the, I want a, v, I want a VW bus electric because the form factor of that is perfect for, you know, a skateboard style yeah. system and then a tremendous amount of space. Right. Like that's, that's something that you could just stuff people and dogs and things into. And I think it could be really, really neat. Yeah, and that actually reminds me. So, you know, we're sitting here talking about um, the trucks. That's where we started. And uh, throw it back up here in the background. You know, we, we talk about adventure vehicles. And in the United States, you're seeing this huge uptick in demand for getting out, right? Campers, RVs, uh, people throwing tents on their, uh, their trucks, going off into the mountains for a couple of weeks. I don't know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> but... This transition to electric, you know, the, the Hummer EV, the Rivian uh, in particular are really focused on getting people outdoors. In fact, Rivian's kind of building their whole brand around that. Um, you know, charging infrastructure is still an issue out in the middle of nowhere, uh, but they're trying to take some steps around that and putting chargers, you know, near state parks and national parks and in points of interest, you know, so people can get to Colorado, recharge their vehicle at the mountains. But I want to see um, some companies start building the adventure trailers that you tow behind 
with battery pack chassis. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like extra battery capacity. And uh, in Europe, there was even that small company. I think we saw it several months ago. Yeah. Months ago that are yeah. building these little towable battery yeah. packs for the EVs, right. To extend their range. And, you know, that's a great idea, right. Cause you can tow it, use the battery capacity. And then maybe there's a station that's got, you know, you can trade them out, you know, pull up, pull up one, park it, grab another one and keep on going. Um, so, you know, really interesting ideas of how to just keep these things moving. Even better idea. Diesel generator hooked up to a <laughs> generator on a trailer. And then you don't even have to worry about getting to a charging station. There yeah. you go. There you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Problem solvers. Use the Somebody. existing infrastructure. We can solve do this. <laughs> Somebody will do it. Guaranteed. Heck yeah. Why not? All right, guys. It's after nine. I'm killing this. Casey's like, I'm not even halfway through my glass of scotch. Yeah, but, uh, I'm going to drink some whiskey tonight. You guys have a good night. <laughs> All right. Pretty good first video. Uh, first live test. I think it went pretty well. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll get about five views out there on YouTube this week. So it's all the over under is three over under is three. I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take the over. I'm going to get real aggressive. Okay. And there's only one way to end our videos, which is okay. See you guys later. And we're